Welcome to the Echo Driving School channel. Uh, this route uh, was recently done um, by one of my students uh, Wednesday um, at Mitcham Test Centre where unfortunately she did fail um, and she did quite a few serious faults um, and, I f and I feel that it's necessary to do a video. We have done a video on Bennington Lane and this route, the route itself is not um, that different from what previously has been done but um, some of her faults um, do require a little bit of uh, explanation uh, and I feel that um, you know a little commentary uh, will help uh, you guys hopefully understand what's needed um, her initial drive uh, as she comes out you know she looked uh, she gave a signal she positioned herself uh, correctly towards the fence uh, made reasonable progress uh, as you'll see from the speedo it you know it was about 10 miles an hour coming out the test center um, so this test was about 1:35 uh, in the afternoon um, where she's going down this road it wasn't that busy so she's making progress uh, a little bit I mean one of the things that the examiner did say about her drive is that she was not making progress and just wasn't seeing gaps that uh, you know as you get to test standard you need to be make you need to be seeing and making so that's one of the things that uh, uh, was the criticism um, so as she's coming out here you know center mirror left mirror giving a left signal uh, also a point to note that she was using the tom tom from the onset so the tom tom said at the end of the road turn left so she positions so she positions herself correctly here um, i think obviously it's not fully clear from the video because we can't see the right but as you can see there was there are there are some gaps in between where perhaps she could have actually come out. Um, I wasn't uh, in the car with her, so I am only, you know, um, giving a feedback from watching the video myself. Um, but yeah, so when you see a gap and it's safe to do so, it's only a left turn, so it should be fairly simple. Um, just using the techniques that already you would have learnt that if you can walk across um, not run across the road as a pedestrian but walk across then you can drive across so use those techniques that you've been practicing with your instructor and make sure that you are practicing coming out of the test center and just general left and right um, so yeah as you can see she is here for a while you know it's almost three minutes into the test and she's still waiting so the road was fairly busy um, so just waiting on her to see when it's safe um, I think she will come out soon uh, there you are but that this coming out itself is a little bit slow so when you come out you know have your clutch at the biting point give it some gas and be ready use your handbrake if you're gonna wait that long uh, as you're making progress here remember this road is a 30 so make sure you check your mirrors and make progress um, if the road is empty, you need to be hitting the 30 limit. Don't sit uh, here. Now, one of the show me questions that the examiner asked her was, can you please show me how you would operate the rear um, wipers and spray some water? Now, she did the front one um, by mistake. So the examiner obviously said, fine, continue. Then she forgot where the rear one was. Uh, she waited until she came to a stop and then she did it. And the examiner said, no, you need to be doing this on the move. So then they obviously attempted it and she did it correctly on the move. So remember this part of the show me question has to be done when the wheels are moving. You cannot, and I stress, you cannot do it when the car is stationary. Now, um, obviously a little bit of traffic again she's leaving a good gap from the car in front which is good and she's making some good progress uh, the Tom Tom did say uh, sat nav that at, um, take the next road on the left um, so at the traffic lights she's going to be turning left so make sure you are checking your mirrors because there is a cycle lane on the left 
and you give a signal uh, at the right time, so roughly five car lengths before uh, actually approaching the junction. So you can see clearly there's the Beddington sign. So we're just making progress. A little bit of traffic here. So just making progress along with the traffic, keeping your tires and tarmac. Um, now, uh, there is gonna be a video to come after this where a student um, made the error of staying in the left lane to go towards Pollard's Hill. So remember, Pollard's Hill is on the right-hand lane, Beddington left going ahead towards Mitcham left. So make sure you are practicing your lane. So again, I, I feel that this is she's a little bit slow in making this progress. So literally, as I said, when, when the road is empty, you need to make progress, can't stress it enough. So there goes the red light, she's gonna stop at the line. She's got her left signal on, which is good. Um, so this uh, the Beddington lane itself has become nice and wide now. Um, so you can get speeds up of um, 30 miles an hour there without any issues. So make sure that when you do Beddington lane, it's a nice wide road. Um, anybody who uh, knows the area prior to the recent resurfacing and the recent widening of the road will actually appreciate how um, wide the road has become. Um, some, have having, some have even argued that uh, because it's so wide and so uh, smooth that it might actually uh, cause concern for maybe joy riders in the evening or late evening, early uh, morning where they're obviously going. So here, before you take the turn, make sure you check your left mirror and making progress. So all of this drive of hers, she hasn't committed any serious fault yet. I would say the main thing is her progress issue, which is again, uh, okay for the moment. So here the road is empty. You need to uh, get the car moving and accelerate uh, to move the car. Um, as, as you can see, it's very wide. So make sure you are making progress um, as, as much as you can on this road here. Um, so the, uh, the Tom Tom said, follow the road ahead uh, at the, at the uh, roundabout. So at this roundabout, if there is no one coming, you don't need to stop um, so long as there is no one coming on your right and nobody on the roundabout itself. So I would approach the roundabout in second gear and look to your right and look ahead uh, to make sure that there is nobody on the actual roundabout itself. So here you see she's just suddenly stopped. So this is a fault because the keep clear sign is in front of her, but she has enough space for her car to move forward. So she is now hindering other road users. So you've got to make sure that you stop after the keep clear if there's no cars and if you're the lead vehicle. So as you can see, that's the place where she should have stopped. So that would have been a fault in itself. Um, so make sure that you do that. Now, if anybody is asked to stop on the, on the left, then you find a safe gap, but you do not mount the curb. You stop on the left. Uh, just a point, you never mount the curb when you're, you know, uh, when you're asked to pull up on the left at any time. So uh, the examiner uh, has obviously uh, asked her uh, with the Tom Tom that follow the road ahead. So again, as you can see, there's no cars coming on the right. The other one is signaling ahead. So she stopped. That is wrong. You should make progress because it's an open junction roundabout. So she's still not going. This is clearly a fault and she's just not making progress. As you can see, she's waiting here for a fair amount of time. It's, it's basically undue hesitancy. Uh, you cannot uh, and you should not wait this long um, you know, before you make progress. So make sure that on open junction roundabouts, you are looking ahead, you are judging the right, you are looking at where the other cars are going and you make progress. Uh, it is no point sitting and every time you get to a junction, you stop because all you will be doing is holding traffic back behind you and that is not making progress. So again, make sure that when you're approaching open junction roundabouts where it's visibly clear 
and you can see on both sides, you approach it in second gear. If there's no reason to stop, then you don't stop, you make progress. So after that, obviously, we're going down Bennington Lane. Uh, decent progress, uh, making uh, decent speed. Um, and, you know, it's not much else you can do. It's a straight line. So just make sure you're not obviously straddling the lines on the right or getting too close on the left. If you see a big vehicle coming towards you, then you want to slightly slow down so you don't get too close to the vehicles. <clears throat> now, uh, as, as she goes along here, a little bit of traffic uh, coming up to a traffic light. Uh, this is the one where it leads towards Asda. So remember, all of this is a 30 miles an hour road. So make sure that you know you are reaching that speed uh, again. There's a little bit of traffic. It was fairly traffic day that day, you know, I have to admit. Um, so she's just making progress and waiting uh, at, the, at the traffic uh, that's proceeding uh, ahead of us. Um, so in a minute, I'm, I'm just going to uh, probably add a little bit of music into it um, just because there's not much to say here. And then as the video progresses, uh, I'm going to come back again in there. Um, okay, so keep watching. Uh, there's more to be said. Um...
back guys so um, obviously the music's turned off this road that she turned right into you're gonna see it's quite a hilly road <clears throat> and um, what's gonna generally tend to happen is uh, she's gonna go through these back roads the examiner is gonna do maybe another pulling in on the left and then coming out uh, remember this is a narrow road and you could encounter meeting other cars so make sure you are keeping a safe gap from the parked cars and if you are asked, so she was asked to pull up on the right which if any of you have over, <coughs> excuse me, if any of you have already uh, practiced the um, reverse on the right <coughs> it's a fairly easy uh, maneuver you've got to make sure that you're fairly wide from the right curb and you look in front you look over your uh, your left shoulder <coughs> and you obviously stop for any vehicles that you see in front or on the side <coughs> now the crucial bit about <coughs> excuse me the crucial bit about this maneuver is to make sure that once you finish the maneuver and you're coming out you look forward over your left blind spot uh, you give a left signal you look over your left blind spot again and make sure that both sides of your road are clear before attempting to go um, so again it was you know done fairly easy so this road was very easy road to do it so a dream come true to be honest if if you get this maneuver it is a definite uh, one that one would want to get in their exam not difficult at all so at the end of the uh, road here uh, she was asked to turn left uh, as you can see she's positioning uh, well it is a no through road on the right so it should be a quick glance right uh, glance left uh, peep and creep looking to the right and making sure you come out so a tad slow um, uh, in that respect uh, as you go down this road it is um, quite sharp uh, if you are driving a manual car you really want to drop uh, your gears to first gear on this corner make sure that you're not overshooting it because there could be another car coming and sometimes cars are parked uh, in awkward positions so she was asked to pull in on the left and she's done that fairly competently and then the examiner is going to ask her to move off at an angle so make sure that you practice how to move off at an angle so moving off at an angle is pure clutch control so make sure you find the bite you look over your blind spot you give a right signal as you clear the car you slightly lower your clutch and then back up again so we say dip the clutch so that you is purely uh, you know practicing your clutch control uh, now if obviously you're going to sit your exam make sure your clutch control is up to scratch and you know if you can't do hill starts and angled start without your instructor helping you you're clearly not ready for the exam so don't waste your money and go for an exam uh, if those uh, what we call um, you know standard practices are not uh, up to scratch so keep practicing now coming out of this road isn't the most easiest thing and this is where she did uh, it was unfortunate it wasn't <coughs> excuse me it wasn't fully her fault but she just didn't react uh, as you can see she's waiting here for a fair amount of time <clears throat> there are cars coming now all she needs to do is look on both sides and peep and creep now as she goes down the hill remember your speed can increase and you need to make sure that you're covering your brakes and changing gears for downhill so you apply your brakes uh, clutch down and change gears now uh, you can see her speed of her car is actually gaining quite a lot of momentum so she's probably not using her brakes wisely now what generally tends to happen here is as she's approaching this van the van goes in front of her and just pulls up on the left now she did not react well see it's it's a very close one as you can see the examiner had to uh, intervene and obviously stop the car now that could have been a serious accident admittedly the actual van was at fault there suddenly coming in front of her but she should have reacted uh, at the roundabout they asked her to turn right so she should have reacted and made sure 
that she saw the van coming but her reaction was just too slow so you know it was a scenario where she could not react now had the examiner not been there you know and she had obviously experienced that in real life uh, then obviously she would have hit that van and yeah as i said in an insurance claim the van might be at fault but again proving that is difficult without a camera and if you can avoid a situation like that that is better than going through an insurance claim typically where the other party you know denies the fault could take up to uh, a year or two um, and you would have to um, you know get the initial payment out and you know you still have to declare it on your insurance that regardless of fault you've had uh, an, an accident um, so you know insurance is a legal requirement so never rely on it as a means of where it's gonna you know help you recruit uh, re, you know recruit all the money it's just there as an insurance purposes and where possible one really wants to avoid any kind of situation like that so the examiner's obviously pulled her up and has asked her to pull off again uh, again obviously we can't see what she can uh, she is waiting here a fair amount of time um, she should obviously be looking over her shoulders and making progress um, I think from this point on the uh, examiner is telling her that the tom tom driving is finished and that he's going to obviously direct her um, so what generally tends to happen from here is she was asked to turn right at the um, end of the road <clears throat> now what you're going to see uh, um, when she's coming at the, from the end of this road it, the road again uh, it was one of those times where the road was extremely busy to come out from this junction it is one of those junctions you must have patience and you must practice coming out on the right now any kind of right turn junction busy or not is a challenge and you know most accidents do happen when you're turning right so she was asked to turn right uh, initially she's waiting uh, for the right reason because there is obviously car after car coming um, as you can see there's a big gap here so she should have actually uh, come out a bit more uh, but she didn't and then after that um, from what I saw on the video it seemed that there was car after car and um, from obviously previously watching the video uh, it's evident that she came out when it wasn't the right time because the examiner again had to do break her um, and uh, obviously she got a dangerous fault for that um, so that car in front is obviously waiting to turn right uh, there are cars on the right coming so this is what makes this junction a big challenge because there's cars on both sides so she decides to move slightly forward which is fine so long as you don't cause any problem but when de when she does decide to go out it definitely was not the right time to go out because there were cars coming on both sides and they do come at a very fast speed as you can see because they're coming from a downhill where the speed is increasing uh, rapidly and obviously most drivers will um, enhance that speed by gassing and obviously coming out so all she needed to do was maintain her position wait it out until it's safe uh, before you know deciding to come out so you know as, as the video runs you'll see uh, where she's made the mistake and you know the car will suddenly jump jolt forward and that's where the examiner has obviously used uh, his due due control so as you'll see she tries to come out uh, and this tries to go there's the car and the examiner has braked for her now she's in the middle of the road um, <clears throat> the other side has obviously given her way and she said that decides to go now the next fault you're going to see of hers is as she's going up the road uh, the examiner said to her to follow the signs for Croydon now the signs for Croydon ahead there are three lanes one goes towards left Beddington Lane and two lanes that go ahead towards Croydon now seeing the sign for Croydon is fairly late because it's hard to see so what you've got to make sure is you're maintaining the left lane you can pause the video here and see the Croydon sign 
and it doesn't really see two lanes until you get more closer so this is where you'll see two lanes so instead of being in the left lane she chose the right lane which is wrong you make sure you are never ever on the right lane unless you're turning right because what's going to happen here is she's going to attempt to go and then other cars will uh, overtake her from the outside lane and what we call undertaking and all she needed to do was position her car where the other car on the left the red maroon car is and that would have been better for her uh, rather than staying on the right lane obviously she knows that she's probably failed by now because the examiner has braked for her so she has made quite a few multiple faults uh, so far but they are quite um, condensed in a space of 10 minutes I would say where majority um, of her faults have happened so as you can see the car on the left has overtaken her so has the van and now obviously she's having to go back to the left lane um, and all she needed to do was uh, yeah see the other car also overtook her so it, you know it's it's dangerous to try and stay on the right lane if you're going ahead so what generally tends to happen is um, they were the main things that uh, previously I've spoken about. She does make a few more faults um, on this video, you know, progress, um, not looking in time uh, at the roundabout, again, going when it's not safe. So um, definitely, you know, one for her to experience the test, but def you know, she, she should have, um, in my opinion, uh, perhaps uh, postponed the test and you know done done um, uh, a, a bit later um, but you know sometime uh, they've just got to experience it just to see how the test is um, you know and other times the, the, the student is ready but because of uh, exam nerves and so forth um, even a very good student um, does break under pressure uh, so here she's following the sign for Croydon uh, and as I said you know she's just following the road towards there um, so again I'm going to sign off now so enjoy the rest of the video uh, all these routes are online and as I said before they're not nothing new I haven't really seen examiners coming out with any new routes on uh, the Mitcham bits because it's not a big area so there's not really that much they can do um, apart from repeating these routes over and over again um, so just before I sign out just want to mention again what generally tends to happen at this traffic lights is you're coming from lane discipline into a road that does not have any road marking whatsoever and one of the key things to remember is that when there is no road marking you need to position on the left a meter from the curb and make sure that you are aware of your surrounding because other road users will generally tend to use up more of the road and if you're not aware of where your other car is on your side then you will end up uh, either on top of them or too close to them so here what my advice will be is you should follow the red line on the left there are two red lines you stay on the first one on the outside and you make sure that you are constantly checking your mirrors and not getting too close to the curb or the parked cars so um, this is going back towards Purley Way uh, where Sainsbury's um, PC World uh, the old Toys R Us so you know for references of anybody who wants to practice this uh, either with friends or family or their partner's car this is where it is uh, so make sure you do have a practice uh, the boss has just signaled I think to pull in um, on the left so she's okay to stay behind the bus her position is actually decent here um, she hasn't gone too much on the right you can see the red line constantly in her view which means her position isn't too close on either side um, so she's gonna go up here through the IKEA and straight up um, and then I think there is going to be a fault um, on the roundabout so see if you can spot it um, and you know leave any comments as usual um, so yeah signing out and uh, for anybody doing the test best of luck many of you have commented 
and said you've seen the video and it's really helped and you know you've passed because of it so again thank you for all your uh, kind words and uh, yeah keep keep the uh, comments coming and uh, here I sign out thank you for watching Thank you.